Hello you guys and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie. If you don't know me, I am a wedding photographer and today I wanted to kind of react and talk about some Reddit threads of the AITA, so am I the a-hole, family friendly around here. So I've been in the wedding industry for a few years now and I've definitely had some interesting experiences, especially like first starting out in the wedding industry, but I wanted to react to some of these stories and also like give my input in them as well. So I'm on Reddit, which is always a great place to find credible information. The first story we're going to be talking about today is am I the a-hole for telling my sister she needs to pay for childcare or I'm not going to her wedding? The consensus of this story is that yes, you are. So let's read it. My female 25 sister's wedding, female, oh, my, I, I'm female 25, my sister's wedding, she's female 28. So my sister's wedding is in a couple months. She recently sent out invitations. I was invited as a regular guest, not a bridesmaid or maid of honor since we live a state apart and obviously there's a certain level of involvement and time that goes into being part of a bridal party, which I understand. That's true. I want to be there for my sister and obviously I'd like to see her get married. But the problem is, I'm a single mom. My son is six, and when he's not at school, I need to be home watching him, so being out for hours at a time isn't really in the cards for me right now. My sister's wedding is child-free. Since it's taking place in her state, I need to commute, and I'd probably have to be gone from my house for two full days. I can't have family watch my son since they'll all be at the wedding, and I don't really have friends who will babysit for two days. I contacted my sister and asked if she'd be willing to let my son come to the wedding with me and explained he couldn't be left alone so young and that I didn't have anyone to watch him. She responded by telling me her no children policy was strict and she wouldn't make exceptions. I explained my situation again and I said I need some form of childcare or to bring him with me. I then asked if she would pay me to hire a nanny or babysitter to watch him. She got offended and said children and weddings are both parts of life and I need to just figure it out. It's my kid, my problem, which sure that's true, but also her wedding, her making it a problem by not allowing me to bring my kid. I told her she could either pay for my childcare or I wouldn't be going to her wedding, which all she did was call me ridiculous and entitled. She said she shouldn't have to pay for my child and that part of being adult is knowing how to care, wait, knowing how to take care of that kind of thing. I think I need to put on my glasses because I can't read. Okay. Whoo, they're dirty. I think that's ridiculous. Money is tight, childcare is expensive, I can't magically afford for someone to watch my six-year-old and most people would just let me bring him to the wedding. My sister says she's definitely not paying for childcare and I guess you're not going to the wedding then. My whole family is mad at me for not being there for my sister. Um, am I the a-hole? Okay, so she did add an edit to this. I think some people are misunderstanding the post, so I'll be more clear. I'm not trying to force my sister to pay for anything, and it's totally fine if I can't come. She accepts that, and I just don't go. It only became a problem when my entire family came after me for not going to the wedding. I'm not mad at my sister for not paying. I'm mad at her for turning the family against me and saying I don't want to come to the wedding and complaining about me behind my parents' back. She complained about me not going to the wedding as if I purposely avoided it. Okay, so that is, that's an interesting, this is an interesting story because I think more and more weddings, at least weddings that I've been seeing are, you know, a lot of people my age are having child-free weddings and I kind of understand it especially if you you know you don't want a lot of children running around um, if you want to maybe have a really late wedding like I've seen some weddings go at least till midnight with partying and stuff and you want it to be child-free you know at the end of the day it is your wedding and you can make that decision but I do think realistically people will have kids people uh, adults have children and so if you make that rule of it being child free some people won't come to the wedding because maybe they can't afford you know a babysitter even if it's just for an evening they don't 
you know, can't afford to hire childcare. So I think if you're going to make that decision in your wedding, you need to be understanding if people end up not coming because of that decision. And it's not because, oh, you're an adult, you need to figure it out. You should have thought of that before you had kids. I don't think that's the issue. I think it's within your right to have a child-free wedding and it's within, a, you know, parents' right to not come because they can't afford childcare. I think that's one issue. I would never ask someone to pay for my childcare so I can come to their wedding. So I do think, can you bring your kid to this state and have someone watch them, you know, while you're at the wedding? I don't know. I don't know people's situation. I, you know, it's hard to say people's budget, but I personally don't think I would ask somebody to pay for my childcare. Now, maybe you just say, hey, I can't afford to come because I can't afford the childcare and the travel, like all of those expenses. I want to be there for your wedding. I want to honor the child free thing, but I can't afford it. And then it's, you know, kind of on them and their response. So if they're mad at you because you can't afford childcare, you know, I feel like that's more on them. But for me, I wouldn't ask someone else to pay for my child care. I mean, I, I will say, I mean, they're sisters, so I don't know how close this person is with their sister. Like if I couldn't afford to come, my sister and I are close and she would probably pay, but I wouldn't ask her. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't ask her to pay for it. She would just be like, well, I want you there, so I'll pay for it. If you can't afford, I'll just pay. Like if I couldn't afford a plane ticket, she would just pay because she wants me there. So it seems like the issue isn't that you can't get the kid there, because if they, you know, she let you bring the kid, that doesn't seem to be the issue. So couldn't you then bring the kid and then have someone watch them while you're there? I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of like missing context, I think, in this story, but I don't, and, and I don't know if I agree 100% that this person is the a-hole. Like, I don't know if I believe 100% that this person's in the wrong either. Like, I just think you shouldn't have asked. Uh, you should have just said that you can't afford it. And if that sister, it, you know, you tell her, I can't afford the childcare, I can't afford to come, um, but I want to be there and I love you and all of that, and they're not understanding and won't lift the child free policy for you, then I, I think that's more on the bride or the couple than on you. But yeah, I think asking someone, if you want me at your wedding, you have to pay for childcare, is a little eh. It's a little eh. You know, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have done that. Okay, let's move on to the next story. This one says, am I the a-hole for telling my fiance her sister isn't invited to our wedding? The consensus here is not the a-hole. Okay, so myself and my fiance have been together close to a year, engaged for half of that. We are planning a wedding in the fall of 2024 and have started a guest list. She comes from a big family and I'm an only child. We are close with one of her sisters in particular and often went to visit her and play board games and such. The sister has a fiance and is pregnant. Recently, my fiance told me that her sister was having a shotgun wedding before the baby arrived in order to keep with their traditional values and appease familial religious desires, okay? Back up a bit. I've done a lot for her sister and soon to be husband. I planned a birthday party for his son from another marriage. I've given her rides, always brought small gifts when I would visit. I've gone as far as to stop everything I was doing to help her during a health scare when she was pregnant. I really feel like part of the family. Fast forward, in a text to my fiance upon announcing her wedding, her sister made it a point to say, it's a small wedding, no plus ones. OP can come to the dinner afterwards. All fine by me. I honestly don't really mind as ceremonies can be dull and I understood why she would only want to have immediate family at her small wedding. I woke up on the day of the wedding to help my fiance get ready and drive her to her sister's house. I plan on driving my fiance, her sister, and her sister's soon-to-be husband to the venue and bringing them to the dinner afterwards. My fiance told me, it's okay, just drop me off at my sister's and I will get a ride over. A little odd, but I was fine with that too. I arrived over there and as my fiance got out of the car, I asked if I could come in and congratulate them. She seemed hesitant and said, uh, okay, let me just text my sister to make sure. I was dressed in plain clothes and was hesitantly invited to come inside. We walked up to the house. Inside was a party of her siblings and their friends and significant others all dressed up. They all looked at me and didn't say much. 
I saw another one of her sisters and her new boyfriend was in a suit. Everyone was invited. The no plus ones only applied to me. Ugh. I immediately left and in a text told my fiance they were off the guest list for our wedding. My fiance is upset at that because her sister is her close friend. She said maybe I did something to upset them, which is why I wasn't invited. I've been nothing but kind and caring for her whole family. I spent hundreds of dollars and gone above and beyond for everyone. Now we are fighting over this. Am I the a-hole? Okay. The consensus was that this person is not. So I can see why, like that would bother me. Like if I was, you know, engaged to my husband when we were engaged and I was not invited to the immediate family. Okay, let me back up. Like if my husband and I, when we were engaged, if they were, they told me they just wanted like an immediate family thing, like a, an immediate family ceremony. I would totally be understanding just like this person um, that posted this story is totally fine with the immediate family thing not a big deal but then if you found out that it wasn't just immediate family and everyone was invited but you like first i would probably reflect on have i done anything to make anybody upset but i would be upset too like imagine if somebody's new boyfriend like they don't even know if they're gonna be together for a really long time is invited to the immediate family ceremony like I would be upset too if I was this person genuinely I would be upset too <laughs> but I don't think I would just immediately take them off of my guest list because just because I am offended and like you know my feelings are hurt by the actions they did, I would still want to do the right thing, I guess. And to me, the right thing is still inviting them, especially if my person, you know, my fiance is close with her sister. I understand not wanting to invite her. It would be really awkward, especially given this situation, but I think I would still invite them. Like, do I think you're totally within your right to not invite them? Yes, but it may be a bit too rash. Again, I would be a upset too. I think being upset at this situation is completely rational and having your feelings be hurt is completely rational but I would try to work it out and then invite them to the wedding just to be the bigger person but obviously everybody thinks if you don't that doesn't mean you're the a-hole. Apparently the original poster offered the following explanation why they think they might be the a-hole is because they upset their fiance and she said that they were being petty. Yeah, I mean, I kind of understand that. Like, their question is, why should I invite them if I was specifically left out of their wedding? But I also understand that. So I think this is a really difficult situation, but I think if I was in that situation, your feelings are totally valid. Feelings are hurt. You're angry, you're upset. But I would try to be the bigger person in this, especially, like, if it upset like my person that I was gonna marry. They are really, really close with this person, but I totally understand if you don't want to. <laughs> so I'm in the middle <laughs> of this one. I am definitely in the middle. Okay, I really wanna do this uh, or read this next story because of the title jumped out at me. It's, am I the a-hole for selling a family heirloom to pay for my destination wedding? And the consensus is yes. <laughs> So I definitely, I wanna read this one. Okay. My fiance, 38 female, and I, 39 male, are planning to get married this summer. We both want to have quite a lavish wedding at a winery in another state. The two of us agree that it's the most important occasion of our lives, so we should make it as memorable as possible. We both have stable jobs and a good amount of savings, but it's not quite enough for the admittedly ambitious plans we have in our heads. Okay, so it sounds like they're trying to, you know, drop some bank on this wedding. My father passed away in January and in his will he left me a very valuable Think five figures family heirloom. Wow, okay. I'm not much for big family traditions, so although it's a nice thing to have, I'm not massively attached to it. I have plenty of other good memories of my father and I don't need a fancy heirloom to remember him by. My brother, 34 male, however, is a huge history nerd and is really, really attached to it. He was a very upset by my father's decision in the will. The reason it went to me and not to him is that this has traditionally been passed to the firstborn son. 
My fiance and I d don't plan to have children and I think he assumed therefore that he or his children would be in line to get it if I were to pass away. After some decision, my wife-to-be and I decided that we would like to sell the heirloom to pay for our wedding. My brother, who is also my best man, was furious when he found out and he said he wanted nothing to do with my wedding anymore. He thinks my wife-to-be and I are behaving like spoiled brats. <laughs> In addition, he's convinced my uncles and cousins not to come to the wedding either. With our parents having passed away, this means that virtually none of my family will attend the wedding, which I'm really upset about. I think since I legally inherited the heirloom, I can do what I want with it. I think he's just upset because I ruined his expectations of one day inheriting it. But since my uncle and cousins agree with him enough that they're not coming to the wedding, I'm not sure I'm in the right. Am I the a-hole? Okay. First of all, it just sounds like you're in a different tax bracket than me, and I just cannot understand family heirlooms being that much. I don't think my family has not any heirlooms, to be honest. And also, I am very sorry to hear about your both of your parents passing. I understand the brother being upset, especially if he wanted this heirloom and to sell it when it does mean so much to him and to the family for your wedding, which your wedding's an important occasion in your life, but to sell a family heirloom in order to pay for a very like self-admittedly lavish wedding, I would say probably not the best choice. Like I understand why people would be upset with you for sure. I would probably be upset. I would not just go and sell it. I do think when it comes to these things, like heirlooms and things being passed on, it's really, really hard, especially like, it sounds like your brother really, really wanted this specific heirloom, so I would say give it to him. I just don't think it's worth it to sell this and create all of this tension in the family for your just your wedding. Your wedding's really, really important, but long term, yeah, you're gonna look back on your wedding for the rest of your life, but like the relationships in your family and stuff, I think are more important in this case than having a very lavish wedding. I mean, can you sell something else of not that's not significant, you know? Sell something else that you have um, that's not this family heirloom. Well, I mean, it is your decision what you do with it because it was, you know, passed down to you. So yes, you're fully right to sell it. Like you're within your rights to sell it. You can do it, it doesn't matter. But like the, the ramifications on your relationship with your brother and other people in your family, is it worth that money? to put towards a wedding. I don't think it is, so I kind of agree with people. Yes, it's your property to do with whatever you want, but I don't think it's worth it. I don't think it's worth creating all this drama and tension in your family over, you know, a lavish wedding. Some of the comments, like I'm reading it as I'm talking and people are like, yes, you are, because you're caring more about a ridiculously lavish wedding that will break the bank than you do for your relationship with your brother or your dad's tradition. So that's kind of, sums up I think how I'm feeling. You're focusing more on a day, having this very lavish day, versus the future relationship with your brother and other people in your family that wouldn't be coming to the wedding. And also, you know, your dad left it to you. And even if you don't feel sentimental towards it, like I think the thought of your dad leaving it to you, I would feel more sentimental of him wanting to leave that to me personally. So yes, I agree with the consensus that you are the a-hole. Sorry. So this is something new that I'm doing on my channel. I'm trying to react to these kinds of wedding stories. I'm just being in the industry. I would love to get more like photographer stories. So if you have any kind of story like this, please leave it in the comments down below. But that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know how you, you like it. Do you want me to continue this? I think I'm going to make a few more videos and see how this does on my channel if you guys like it. Because if you hate it, then I'll probably stop. So definitely let me know what you think of all of this down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and make sure you subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye!